Well, welcome everyone to Race Face TV and this edition of Race Face Spotlight. Today, we're going back out to Colorado, Falcon, Colorado, that is, where we're going to find the older brother of the Red Army, Colby Sokol. Colby, how are you doing tonight? Good, how about you? I'm doing great, man. I've been seeing a lot of you here over the last three weeks. Got yeah, you. Out, got to hang out with you in Vegas, and then I saw you in Indianapolis, and so let's talk about Vegas first. So what was it like going and running your last quarter midget races um, and doing that at the Winter Nationals? Uh, it was really fun running or running my last quarter midget race in Vegas. I mean, I got two wins, um, a second place, and then two of my other cars broke, but at least I got two wins, and that was a really, really good race for me. I, I mean, I love going there. I won two races, tried to do burnout and run my one in my wind car, but I couldn't because I didn't have enough horsepower, but that's okay. But it was just a big race in general. I, I did some fun things, and I saw you, and I saw Big A, and I spent time with family, and we just enjoyed our last quarter of the race. Yeah, and I want to tell you, you were, you were stout out there because if you didn't have the problems with your two other cars, I think you come away from there with four wins because um, yes. you, you, were, you were definitely on the gas there. And you definitely get the re the award. I shouldn't say reward, but the award for the best burnout. I think you thought, hey, this is going to be my last burnout in a quarter midget, and I'm going to have some fun, and you did an awesome job. Yeah. Andrew and I was going to get in trouble, but they, they, they weren't going to get me in trouble. It was my last quarter midget race. No, everybody, actually, you might, you probably couldn't hear because of the engine, but everybody was shouting and cheering for you. So, so you, were, you were good to go there. So let's talk about... Um, what's coming up in 2019 for you? So you're, again, retirement party for you. You're retiring at 12 years old. That's actually pretty cool. And you're going to be moving on to, to the uh, 600 micro sprints. So tell us a little bit about that and, and how you're looking forward to, and what's the difference between a quarter midget and a 600 micro sprint? Well, the difference between a quarter midget and a micro sprint is that a micro sprint is a lot bigger, has a lot bigger engine, it's faster, it goes around about 60 miles per hour, uh, a little faster than a quarter rigid, and it has a wing and it runs on dirt. So what's going to be the biggest change you think for you? So if we, you stop and think about it, you're going from a quarter midget, you're going to a bigger race car, a car that's got more power, a car that's got a wing on top of it, and you haven't had that before, but more importantly, you're going to be racing on dirt. That's going to be a big change, but I'm very excited for it. So have you been practicing? I know you've been doing a little bit of practice, and you've been doing any simulator. Have you been able to do anything on the simulator as far as being in, uh, like, racing on the dirt? Yeah, we've been doing the simulator lately, and we, we've been trying to get some – we're trying to get on the actual racetrack to go and practice with my car. So now it's time to tell the truth. When you're on the simulator – were you in a micro sprint or were you jumping in like a 410 sprint car? 360. 360. <laughs> they, don't have, they don't have micro sprints on iRacing. I wish they did, but just racing wing dirt cars. Wing dirt cars. So 360 wing dirt cars. That's got to be a lot of fun. So when you look back at your quarter midget career, you've had an unbelievably successful career in quarter midgets. Give us some highlights. I know that you won a national championship last year. But talk about some of the big race wins in your career and some of the national championships that you won. So big races in my career would be like um, or like things like my USAC national championship last year in senior Honda, a very hard class, and I feel like that was a really big accomplishment for me. I mean, I've won, I've won um, seven grands in a time span of six years. I think is impressive. For me, at least, and uh, and I think it's also cool. I mean, I've got some other local championships. But I also have won other races around um, locally and um, like all over the place, everywhere. Okay, so I mean, seven grands in six years—that that is definitely impressive. And I know that you guys have run everywhere. You've run Indy, you've run Pocono, you've run Texas. I think you guys ran at Phoenix, right? Yes. And I think most all the big races um, you guys have participated in. And, and it's kind of like a little joke because when they see that big hauler come in, they know the Red Army's there. They know that they're going to have to run with you guys. 
And so moving into next year, it's going to be a little bit different. You know, you guys are kind of going and having to, to kind of start over, if you would. I know that you guys are going to do great. But are you up to that challenge? Yes. We climbed the ladder to the top of quarter midgets, and now we're starting right back from the bottom in microspins. And you're going to climb the ladder right up there. So talking about climbing the ladder, um, I, when I was talking to your brother on one of the other shows, we, we talked to him about the same thing. It's kind of like you guys are doing exactly what NASCAR does, and that's starting off the season with the biggest race of the year. And you guys are going to the Tulsa shootout to where you're going to run both the Micro 600 and a junior sprint. So tell us a little bit about that and how exciting you are to go and get on, because that's a big stage there too as well. I mean, all the big, yeah. all the big sprint car racers and NASCAR drivers have all run there at the Tulsa shootout. Very big stage, and I'm very excited for it. I mean, it's going to be it's going to be very new to me, but also it's going to be good. I'm going to be running two cars, and that's going to help me get some track time for my micro sprint. And um, it's just going to be pretty good. I'm gonna, I'm very excited, excited, and um, and I think it's going to be really fun, very exciting. All right. So um, I was uh, texting with your dad earlier today, and he said I think he shot me a number. It was like 900 and 38 cars are registered for the Tulsa shootout. What's that gonna be that's like crazy. to go in? That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, that's like twice twice the size of Indianapolis one year. We had 500 cars at Indy one year, and this is almost 1,000. Twice the size, twice the size, lot car, car count. And very some of the exciting. best racers from all over the country come to, actually some of the best racers from all over the world. Yeah, very, very um, good race car drivers. Christopher Bell, Kyle Larson, um, Keith Coons, everybody you can think about that's really good dirt racers and even NASCAR drivers. It's going to be a very fun race to go watch and also race at the same time. Yeah, and it's going to be a major learning experience for you guys. And, and I'm, uh, I'm really looking forward to that. I'm hoping I get to come down for that race. I'm not sure yet, but I'm hoping to get there. Now, you've had a lot of really good support in your, in your quarter midget career. And I think that really starts right with the hub of your family, um, your mom and your dad, your grandfather, your grandmother, Big A. Um, what would you like to say to all of them to kind of tell them how much they've meant to you in your quarter midget career? I'd like to give a big thanks to them. They've helped me through everything. They've got helped me with the cars, got me on the racetrack, everything. I mean, I just, they're all very helpful. It's not like... Uh, none of them are helping. Everyone's helping with everything, and it just makes it a lot funner when everybody's doing everything together and not someone sitting out. I just, and it, it makes every race weekend very special. Yeah, I really enjoy hanging around with your grandfather. You know, he's he's such a cool guy and uh, definitely one of your biggest fans, if not your biggest fans. He's so proud of both you and Justice, and and I see him getting very very involved. So, um, are you going to have to retrain him? To how to kind of work on the on the micro sprints now? No, he's at, he's at an, he's really he was really good at doing everything he did on the court ridges, and I think it's going to be a still big help on the micro sprints. Yeah, I'm sure that he is. So let's give a shout out to your sponsors. Who would you like to thank? I'd like to thank Rainbow Sprinkler, Peak View Plumbing, Advanced Racing Suspensions, Scotts Racing Engines. So you've got some. I know that you're getting ready for the shootout. We've already talked about that a little bit. But what are you going to be doing in your off time here for uh, for the rest of the winter? You got any big plans? Uh, not not really. I don't think. Maybe maybe we will. We run the Christmas up at my nan and papa's house every year. Probably going to do some eye racing. Help me get up there, practice more, and just spend time with family. Spend time with family. Some simulator racing. Simulators good. We'll be doing some race face webinars. So. Yep. Uh, Colby, I want to thank you for being with us. Again, congratulations on an amazing quarter midget career. Um, everybody here at Race Face is really proud of both you and Justice, and we're really looking forward to your 2019 season. Is there anything you'd like to share with the viewing audience before we wrap up the interview? Uh, not really. I'm just, um, if you do, go follow my Instagram and my Facebook, and I have a challenge for all you fans out there. I could get, I have, have 10,000 followers on my Facebook right now. If I could get 15,000 followers by the end of the year, then I would do a giveaway of my merchandise. Okay, there it is. He threw down the challenge. 15,000 followers on Facebook, and he's going to give away some free merchandise. 
Everybody hear that? So if you're watching tonight, if you've not liked his page, go there, like his page, but then you need to share it with your racing friends and let's help him get to that 15,000 mark. Because like I said, I know he's already over 10,000 now, so um, he, he's got the, the engine cooking and he's looking for more fans. So everybody stay tuned. This young man right here is going to have an amazing racing career. He's a smooth driver, he's very fast, and he's just an all around good kid, same way as his little brother. So again, everybody, thanks for tuning in tonight. Make sure to go out, check out Colby's website at ColbySokolRacing.com. And everybody, go out and support local racing in your communities. And again, as we said before, I know it's winter time, but if you look real hard, you'll find some indoor racing to go to. And what the heck, if you got nothing else to do, come on down to the Tulsa Shootout and check out both Colby and Justice. And we'll see all of you back here on the next Race Face Spotlight Show. Good evening, everybody. Thank you.